I'm Rachel Poli with Ari Meglin, and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We're on episode 32, and this week's question is, what's the best and worst writing advice you've received? Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening so you never miss a show. And if you enjoy this episode, please give it a like. This week, to help us discuss writing advice, we have a special guest with us. Please welcome Ian Goff. Yay! We need sound effects. (laughs) We need sound effects. (laughs) So first, we'll get the bad stuff out of the way. Ian, what's the worst writing advice you've ever received? Uh, It's an interesting question because advice generally I'm pretty much open to. Um, I think all advice has some merit depending on the writer and the the person who's who's accepting the advice. But I, I would suppose... I wrote, uh, sorry, I read a book once um, that was one of these self-help books about telling you how to, to kind of make money from writing. Not that that's what you necessarily do it for, although we like that, of course. Um, and it, it's about writing a book a week to push yourself out there. And, and I just thought that's, that's pretty awful. Um, <laughs> Definitely. For one, thing, if for one thing, there's no actual hope of me ever doing that. <laughs> um, second thing is, I mean, the quality must be awful. I just don't see how you can do it. And I'd, I'd be surprised to change anybody who could write a book in a week. If they can, brilliant, good luck to you. But I really find that would be a, a, a kind of a wild thing to do. I, I doubt that would, would work. So I found that pretty pretty useless, to be fair. Yeah, that, that's fair. Uh, writing an entire book a week or even a month, that's, that's a bit much. Yeah. That's like yeah. quick burnout right there. Yeah. I um, actually... I. I we we got a book given to us from an author we'd never heard of and it was awful i am not gonna name names i don't do that but it was woeful like <laughs> the continuity the most basic continuity was just rubbish the story was awful and when we looked into this author she seemed to produce a book a month and it really proved that that is not a good thing mm, because yeah. obviously she was just churning these books out and they were they were so bad. Like I have read some bad books, but oh no, painful, painful books. <laughs> I, I kind of similar because I picked up a couple of books, and I, I just like to to browse and see what people are doing. And you know, I like to get some indie books as, as well. Um, and I picked up one, and I read it, and it was about thirty pages, and it it was pretty terrible. And this, this author had probably done about fifty. And I just thought, uh, it's not, it, I, I can't pick up another one. It's not going to happen. Um, no. So yeah, I just, I just don't get, understand because you still need an editor and a book cover artist. And when do they take the time to plan all of this stuff and actually get it done? Like, what do their days look like if they're planning to write and publish something within 30 days? You know? I, I, I don't know if they do plan. <laughs> I think it's just. <laughs> well, that's what, fair. <laughs> What, what, um, what's in your head and, and there it goes um which is where we will start but it's yeah it's nowhere near what it should be um and and, and that was that was actually someone who wrote a book saying write a, a book a week or a book a month or whatever and i just thought like, you know it's not gonna happen hmm. i wonder what else they'd written or is it one of those sorts either they churn out crap books or whether they just churn out books on how other people should write books <laughs> while not actually having written books yeah that's a good good point <laughs> Yeah, I uh, wonder how many books I've sold of how to write a book when they haven't written one, if, if that's okay. <laughs> Some lovely oh. confusion there. <laughs> I think it's a marketing tactic, isn't it? It's a bad, bad marketing tactic, but it's like carpet bomb with yeah. books to get your name out there massively. But it's like, surely you want good books. Yeah. Not yeah. not being well known as being a crap writer. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe that's what people want. No, no, I, I agree totally. I agree. Um, I mean, I think I've slowed down in my writing. Well, I know I have this year. I've kind of taken a bit of a, a slower approach. Um, but, but probably thinking back at it after my first one, this, it's, it's better that I've done that now. It feels better. It, the writing feels better. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's worth having a bit of patience and slowing down a bit, I think. But I suppose that's, that's the, the first piece of, of, if you like, writing advice from a book that I thought was pretty, pretty awful. Um, and another one that springs to mind is, is ignoring or not, not even asking for feedback. 
because I, I just don't see how you could not want feedback if you want to you want to grow and develop as a writer and improve um i know i say this all the time and i've been writing for a, a couple of years now but i'm growing all the time and the only way to do that is get feedback and say you know what actually yeah that makes sense if i read that back i didn't quite get that as i wanted it to be or that doesn't feel right um i mean you could probably do a whole podcast on feedback if you haven't done one already but that's that's um you know, to, to actually ignore it or forget about it completely, unless it's absolutely terrible and someone's just put a silly comment on, doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, no, it doesn't make sense to me either. I mean, if you're putting art out there in the form of writing or just any sort of art or any sort of product, you need to get feedback on potential buyers or just anybody, because how else are you supposed to improve? Yeah, agreed. That's just, it's, I just, the idea that that's even advice, it's, it's like, what that is worrying that someone is out there giving that crap to possibly like new and young writers. It's like, hey, just, you know, don't get any feedback. It's like, don't get me wrong, nobody likes feedback because, you know, as you said, if you want to grow, you got to get feedback. And to grow, you, someone has to tell you what's wrong. <laughs> And we don't want to hear that. Nobody wants to hear someone <laughs> saying, oh, you didn't do a very good job, X, Y, Z. But, you know, you have to kind of put the, push the rage down and think, yeah, maybe they made sense. But you have to kind of do it. Yeah. Those uh, are the I people think... who write a book a month. <laughs> yeah, prob probably. Yeah, probably. Um, I would say it's, it's, it's how you take the feedback, isn't it, really? I mean, if, if, if the feedback's delivered and then there's some constructive things in there you can take from it, then you learn. It's great. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But if mm. it's if it's thrown at you or you think, oh, I'm just going to dismiss it, then, you know, I, I just, that, it's, again, one of those things I don't agree with at all. Yeah. Mm. I suppose there's, um, I suppose that's the main two pieces of, of worse writing advice I've, I've picked up on. There, there are probably more out there, but as I say, I'm quite open to advice. I mean, there's a couple of other things which maybe controversially, I, I, I don't dislike them. They're not bad advice, but I kind of border on, well you know you could you could take it how you feel so i suppose one and i, I think I, I saw it on your previous podcast to give you a little little plug there um <laughs> we can link to it excellent <laughs> uh was was sticking to your, your genre now that's not bad advice at all that's good advice however i think in the early days of writing and i think for me especially there were a few genres that i'd wanted to try and I wasn't sure which fit best for me. And I still now, I, I don't tend to stick to just one. I like two or three. So I, I do a lot of fantasy. Um, I do a fair bit of humor, but I do like to dabble in the horror side as well. And I think sticking to one genre totally can be a bit restrictive in the early days, I suppose, when you're settling in. I mean, once you've established something, you think, actually, that's my genre. And I don't really want to go back into the others now. Great. But I don't know if I'm ever going to stop switching between, say, fantasy and horror because I find I've got so many ideas for both. Mm, so yeah. it's not bad advice, but I just think it's um, flexible for me personally. Now, there are certain genres I'd never go to. I mean, romance is, uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I know I, I won't stop dabbling in, if you like, fantasy and horror because I like both. Uh, and humor too so there'll probably be a combination of, of two or three at some point there's already a combination of two with the fantasy and, and the comedy but um I, I have ideas for horror comedy and and separate horror stories and things so there's, there's so many ideas it's, it's ridiculous i think um, flexible is a good word for it yeah because there's an audience out there for all these different genres and if you have a loyal fan base if you have loyal readers and you're a good writer and people really value what you create you can write in any genre you want and they'll they'll follow mm -hmm. you can yeah. convert non-horror readers into horror readers you never know yeah yeah I, I suppose it's um I, I suppose the other side of the coin is you could get turn some readers off because if they like one thing you do they might not like the other thing you do but then it, that's, I, that's a bit of a balancing act, I guess. But um, I like the freedom to be able to do a couple of genres rather than just one. That's just a personal thing. I think it's widening the net, though, isn't it? So even if you don't turn everyone who likes fancy into liking horror, 
Mm-hmm. You, you're catch, catching some horror readers who might never have even looked at you because they weren't fantasy lovers. Yeah, yeah. So, and also, how do you know what you like unless you try a few? True. So I think that's, I, de- I definitely agree that yeah. you should definitely have a bit of a dabble. Yeah. And th- there isn't this need to stick with one. I mean, yeah, when, when we did talk about it, there was like specific reasons why some people might want to and why you can dominate a market. But I don't know, you can also stagnate in that market as well. So, I mean, to be fair, I understand it totally. And that does make sense. Um, I mean, lots of authors have got their, their, their genre that they stick to and they're expert at it and they're brilliant at it. And it's what you want from them. Um, it just, you know, just... I think probably I'm over, overrun with ideas. I'm being overrun with ideas. I need to stretch and spread the wings a little across different genres. I mean, I've got a couple of sci-fi stories kicking about. They're probably only short stories, but I might do those as well. So, you know, there's, there's dipping toes in certain, certain areas. Yeah. Love it. Definitely. Um, I, I suppose there's a couple of other pieces of advice along, along the... I'm, I'm straying into maybe... Not good advice, but I'm straying into the borderline advice, if you like, some good or, or bad, depends on your, your, your thoughts. Um, write what you know. And the reason I struggle with that slightly, I write fantasy. Um, <laughs> I've not really met any dragons or goblins recently, but that's the kind of way I go. So <laughs> Maybe I will. Um, but, but when you say write what you know, I, I, I've, you know, I've written about one of my favourite characters I've written about so far, I'm plugging myself slightly, um, is a skeleton, I, a skeleton butler I call Calcium. <laughs> but I've never met one. Um, I just, he just had to, to be there and, and he's, he's a touch sarcastic, so maybe that's the bit that's coming from me, I don't know. But um, he's a great character and I love that character. So I, I, I write what you know if you can, brilliant. I don't tend to write from experience too much. I like to get the imagination run wild. Um, so that's, that's probably on that, that line really as well. I can agree with that, especially since I, I like it when people tell you to write what you don't know, because there's always something new to learn. Mm-hmm. And you can always finagle that some way, somehow in your novel. But yeah. it's true. I didn't even think of that angle. Like, right where you know, well, I've never met a goblin before, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I, I like the that. fact, don't you write mysteries, though? It's like, so how, how well do you know murderers? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that, explain that one, please. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I should put that on my to-do list, you know, just meet a goblin somewhere on the run. I don't know. But... Um, it's it's just that's, that's the only reason I come from that angle. Write what you know, I guess. Uh, and a lot of people I, I know, I, I went on a creative writing um, course, and it was excellent. The people were brilliant. The tutor was excellent. Um, but a lot of it was talking about write your experiences, and I just not comfortable doing that particularly. Um, I prefer writing something out my head. So while they were writing a lot of nonfiction, I was doing fiction stories and just coming up with kind of crazy things, really. So, but they seemed to enjoy them. So that was, that was good. It worked. Yeah, yeah, you have to do what you enjoy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I suppose, sorry, I'm rubbing on a bit. No, <laughs> um, no, no, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other, the other thing, which is the last kind of thing, which is in the, not negative advice, but one, you, you know, you kind of give or take, depends, is plan your writing. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm, I'm very much a pantser writer. So I don't plan an awful lot. I've, I do a bit more now. I've become more of a planter. Planter is that word? I get yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, planter. Um, so I'm, I'm more of that now than I was. But when I first started, my first novel was written was was definitely by the seat of my pants, if you like. Um, but now I do a bit of both. So I mean, it's just plan it. You're writing. Some people need to plan meticulously, and that's great, and it works for them, and it's perfect. My brain doesn't let you do that. <laughs> it's not having it. it it really doesn't i'll be halfway through a, a chapter one maybe and then think oh i've got an idea for chapter seven and away i go and i just have to do it. it it just you know so the planning thing for me a little but it, it you know if, if i can't let my mind wander it's not going to happen i don't think 
Well, coming from someone who is very much a planner, I do understand that because I've written articles on how I outline my novels and how I plan them out and do the research and all this and that. But every time I write an article about it, I always have a disclaimer saying everybody's writing style is different. Yeah. Everybody works at their own pace. If this doesn't work for you, fine. If you outline it in a different way, fine. If you don't outline at all, fine. But this is what works for me. Maybe it'll work for you too. But th that's the thing about any sort of advice. It's like you can't give out advice and expect everybody to follow it and just have them be like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Agreed. everybody yeah. is different yeah totally i mean that's that's the point isn't it? the word the word is advice yeah so yeah. You, you take from it what works and you know other things don't work for you that's okay but you it's worth listening to all the advice to, to find out what works and what doesn't work for you that's where i see it really mm. also trying different things because i was the same i was a proper pantser and what i did was i i wrote in scenes not chapters so i would yeah. write out a scene and then i'd write another scene and it could be for the same book could be a different book could be uh, the same series but three books later don't know and i have got thousands of these loose scenes a north plot idea for half of these books <laughs> i need to i need to then tie them all in and i i was a pantser for ages and then i started planning but i i'm not so bad that my brain goes oh i can't do too much i get three quarters of it and then go oh, done that and then i have to kind of guess the ending because i don't i never can plan after that i think if i had just stayed as a pantser i would never have moved forward at all with any of my writing yeah yeah and i, th I think trying different ones because people go oh yeah yeah I'm, well i'm definitely a planner i'm definitely a planner and it's like you gotta try yeah. you know, pouncing or plancing. But everyone's like, no, no, I'm stuck in this little... It's like, you can try them. Just, just, just try. <laughs> no, no, I totally Depends agree. on the genre, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yes. Like, some, some books are easier to plan out than others. Some, you just have to pants and just go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I totally agree, especially with the scene thing. I, I do that as well, still, at times. Um, but I, I tend to know my beginning and I tend to know my end. I just have no idea what's happening in the middle until I let it run. Yeah. Um, like wishy bit in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and suddenly something happens. I think, I don't remember right thinking that's going to happen. It just, it just happened. The middle is the worst anyway. Um, I, it is. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, uh, don't they call it the sagging middle syndrome? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I just get to middle and I bring in a new character who wasn't around before. It just tends to happen. So where did they come from? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, a lot of scene writing as well. And it feels like that sometimes. And either scenes turn into short stories or with one of my books that I was, I was working on at the moment, the scenes actually were for another one. And they've now ended up in this one. Um, because yeah. I wanted to use them and they didn't fit. So I had to drag them over. So, it, you know, so, so plan, planning is great. And I do do some outlining now, but I still have to let the, the pants apart me go. Yeah, you got to do what works best for you. That's yeah. the bottom line. Yeah. I, I, I do know a writer and she pantses all of her books and she's published loads and they do really well. Yeah. And it's like, it really is, you know, different horses for different courses. It's yeah. so, you know, some people just do it really well, but there's this kind of, there's always someone where it's like, no, unless you plan everything 100%, then you're not really a writer. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I, think, I think my first, my first novel, actually, I pretty much pantsed a lot. Um, but then moving on from there, then I thought, actually, it's, I need to plan out now, moving on. I know where I want to go, but I need to plan it a bit more. So, um, you know, changing that up slightly. It works so far. Okay, then we'll, we'll swing it right around and say, what is the best writing advice you have ever received? Ever? Okay, um, so best writing advice, I would say probably, it's a com combination of a few things, surprise, is <laughs> write, write for yourself first. If you're going out there literally to write a, a bestseller, wonderful if you can do it, but if you're going to have to write a bestseller for someone else and you've got other people in mind, the story's not going to feel right to you. So I think don't, don't kind of betray your story if that's the right way of putting it. Um, when I, I have a story or a character's 
characters I want to use. I, I kind of have to write them for me and have to feel like I'm comfortable and I like the story and enjoy it. So it links in to write for yourself and enjoy the writing. Um, and if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't want to do it. So uh, that's, that's obvious, perhaps. But some people, I think, get into a rut where you know, they've just got to do the story. Now, I've been writing this for two years and I must plow on and I must get it finished. And it's not an enjoyable process where I don't want it to become that for me. That's a really good point because usually when you hear the term write for yourself it's because people can get tied up with the well I'm following a trend that's doing really well yeah. now or I'm following the money which is never a good thing for writers to do um, but that's a really good point that you said it's not just about that it's about like the story you might have got almost bored of it but you've you've invested so you sort of churned yeah. through it and yeah. it's like knitting gravy and I couldn't imagine the feeling of pushing through and, and to the point where you actually hate the story, but well, you've already done it for a few years. So that is a really good point. I yeah. need to think about that. <laughs> I've had a few stories I've had to step back from because you just need to sometimes, don't you? Because they, you get overrun by them. You think, I've been writing this for so long that uh, <laughs> I, need, I need to walk away. Um, but then, you know, you come back to it again and you're, all, you're reinvigorated and, and great it works. I think if you get to the point where you really you're, you're slogging away at this story and you've been doing it for ages just for the sake of it and you you, you know it's it's now not yours anymore almost it's taken over your life and I, I think you lose the enjoy writing um, so I think we've mentioned about always learning which I agree is true I've been I hadn't realised when I looked this up to, um, today when we we're going to do this that I started writing properly back in about 2016 and it still feels like I only started about two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so i think always learning is going to be there having patience has become a, a, a big thing mm, yeah that, because, that's a big one <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i rushed i rushed out my my first book and i, I know i did um I've, I've tidied it up since so it's okay but <laughs> I, I, was, I was so desperate to get it out there because i was so pleased i'd done it which is good um, but I rushed it out and then thought, you know what, oh, I should have, should have gone through it a bit more, should have been a bit more patient with it, shouldn't have but charged out with it. And there's still that eagerness, but it's kind of taking that into check now and thinking, you know, let's, let's take a bit more time, let's review it again, let's think about it. And that's always worth doing. Yeah, I agree with that because I have seen so many, especially new writers, where it's like they write something and then three months it's like, oh, right, it's coming out. And you think, oh, that's that's fast. Yeah. But then on the flip side, I I am the sort of person that has way too much patience to the point where it's like, it's been about 12 years. Maybe I should, you know, get it out there. But I'm always like, wait, wait, I'm going to rip it apart and rewrite it because it needs new. But then if you wait too many years, you will rewrite it because you're yeah. a totally different person and I, I need to stop rewriting the same novel. It's getting a bit boring now. But yeah, no, definitely patience because people rush too much these days. But Yeah, yeah. I think I still, I still rush a little bit, if I'm honest, but it's, it's better. Um, mm. Again, that's a learning to, to, to pace it a bit more and to take a bit more, more care, if you like, over it. That sounds terrible, but you, you, <laughs> you, get, you get what I mean. Yeah. Um, um, so, so certainly with bringing up the, 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 the one after the, the next one, it, it felt better. It felt more comfortable and it felt better for me off rather than thinking, oh, I'm going to go back, like you just said, and, and have to rewrite it and rewrite it. I've learned something else. And, uh, and, it, and it, you know, so that, that's, that's a, a good learning, I think. Um, and that goes along with another one, which is, is kind of to triple check everything. And there's always going to be that little spelling mistake that gets through and you can't help it that you could have, you know, you could cast, a, it's like casting a fishing net. There's always those little gaps and there's one that gets through, but you know, triple check and does it make sense? Mm. Um, and I'm even starting to, in parts, I'm not great at this, but starting to read out loud a little bit to see if it makes sense when I read it. Um, so, you know, again, the checking and, and, and things like that, I think that's, that's again, that's good advice to make sure you, you triple check and just go, oh, yeah, done, great. Send it out there. Yeah, totally. I, what I like to do is I like to have a list of questions that need to be answered within the book or just general like grammatical things or, as you said, does it make sense? And I like to check them off as I read through my story because it can get hard to 
figure out where the editing actually stops because yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been working on my novel since 2011 and it's, it's still, it, it's not published. <laughs> and so, <laughs> speaking of, you know, having too much patience, uh, but it's so hard to figure out, okay, is it ready now? Like that's, that should be your final question. And cause there's always going to be something to fix. And as you said, there will always be a little typo or something that just happens to get through and it yeah. can't be helped. We're humans. It is what it is. Hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Totally agree. But having a, having a, a list of questions, a tick list is, is a great idea. Hmm. Um, I, I don't do it myself. I should. <laughs> maybe, I'll, I'll, I'll borrow yours, maybe I'll borrow yours off you. <laughs> <laughs> just Google editing questions. I, I looked up questions to ask your beta readers. Or something like that. <laughs> oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. ask your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity, do you read it out loud? Or do you use one of those programs that reads it out loud for you? For me? Um, mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't do it enough as it is anyway, but I would read it out loud myself. Right. Um, I suppose you could use one of those programs, but it'd have to be, you know, good enough to, to some of them are so robotic, isn't it? It just doesn't work. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I read it myself, but I don't do it enough. And that's one of my little points. I know we're coming to something else later, but that's one of my points that I don't do enough of. Mm. Um, because you can read it in your head and it sounds great. And then when you read it out loud, you eh, not really. Yeah. 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 You know, the dialogue might not make sense. Having a program read it to you actually isn't a bad idea though, because yeah. then you can read it, you're hearing it and you're reading it. And mm -hmm. so it's like, you kind of get like that extra read through almost. Yeah. 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 Mm. Hearing, it, hearing it with a, a fresh voice or a different voice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it definitely won't skip over things that we skip over on ours. Like, <laughs> but I just don't like the hearing the sound of my own voice. I think if I was still reading it, I'd just be like, oh, God, it sounds awful. Oh, I, 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 I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. That's, that's why I haven't done it enough. <laughs> I keep putting that off. Um, but it, it, is, it is useful. It is useful to do that, to, to kind of, especially with dialogue here, the dialogue sounds. But yeah, I, I, I listen to my own voice. So um, when I listen to this podcast back, I'll be cringing in the corner somewhere. Oh, you, you, seriously, you have no idea what it was like when we first started recording because not only obviously did we have to record it, then we had to listen to it about four times to edit it. <laughs> then we had to send it to each other to listen to it. And it was like, you, you, you're like, oh, it's so awful. But strangely enough, the more you do it, the less you know it's, it's, it's really yeah. true. And I didn't, I always thought that was just bullshit. And as you can tell, we can swear on this, or at least I swear on this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's horrible. The first few times that you hear your own voice, it, it but it does ease. It does. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> well, so we've kind of already touched upon this already, but how often do you take any of this advice? Uh, so, uh, some of it quite often. So the, certainly the, the having patience a lot more now, triple checking things, definitely. Um, things I do a lot more. Um, enjoy the writing. Yes. Because I, 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 to be honest with you, I wouldn't do it if I didn't. Yeah, I think if I, don't, if I don't, yeah, if I don't enjoy the story, I don't like the story. I'm not going to do it. So um, I, there are stories that have been left on that, you know, that abandoned pile in the corner of the room, covered in cobwebs that are, you know, growing old because I didn't like the story. Yeah, I um, think we all have those those drafts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That bits of those might reappear somewhere in some something else, but yeah, you know, um, but I, I think certainly certainly enjoying, always learning without a doubt mm -hmm. every every day i think i look at something and think actually you know what that that would be good i'll try that or that could be good for me so that's a constant um i've always said reading out loud certainly not enough um i do it here and there but could do more if i can stand listening to myself <laughs> um and i ask for feedback more so um there are a couple of other other people on um twitter that have become writing friends which is great. And I ask them for feedback and we share stories and, you know, it's really good that we do that and I'll give feedback. They'll give feedback and it, it makes sense. And I look at it and think, actually, you know, that part they told me, mm, I'm not sure I still like it or what they've told me there makes perfect sense. I would have never thought of it. And, you know, the stories develop. So that's again, learning and helping. So, you know, those are things that I do. I certainly do. I started, started writing to do lists a bit, bit more as well now. 
so I know where I am about, you know, I've got a list of all these things that I want to do and I never kind of get round off. So I'm making a to-do list and trying to pick into those as I go along as well. So yeah, quite a few things I still, I still do. And I, I do since I've, I've learned them. Yeah. Well, I mean, as I said, you, you have to kind of play around with the advice and see what works for you and what doesn't yeah. and what yeah. works for certain projects and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I make to-do lists all the time and I don't always follow them, which is a problem of mine, <laughs> but I will, I will sometimes make to-do lists and then I look at it and I'm like, I don't want to do any of this. So I'll make a new to-do list or I'll just do something totally different and then I'll add it and then check it off immediately to make it seem like I was being productive. Yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> so it kind of defeats the purpose, but I do it. <laughs> You need that little boost. You need that. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Check yeah. something out. I make I to-do, lists something off to-do lists. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I think to-do lists are great though. It's just, they can spiral out of control. Yeah. True. I, I think what I try and do is now I do, I do a master to-do list with everything on, even the stuff that probably won't get done or might not get done. <laughs> um, and then make, smaller ones so for this week i'll take three things off that list and think yeah i could probably get those three things done it makes me feel better i can take those off yeah. um, but one or two things are on there that have been on there since i don't know since the dawning of the dinosaurs and they may <laughs> still be on there long after i've gone i don't know but um to do this are, are, are useful in general yeah <laughs> yeah we're, we're all addicted to to-do lists here yeah <laughs> it's the easiest thing to write it's true as writers, we have to find the easy way out, right? True, true. Maybe we should write a book on stew lists. That would work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Can I just circle back to something about yeah. feedback? You mentioned about, like, t- you know, not asking for feedback. And I think one of the issues, this is just my opinion, mm-hmm. is people seem to assume that if you ask for feedback and someone gives you feedback, you have to take that feedback absolutely yeah. and i i don't know why that is it's like you're you know yes people have read it people have given you thoughts and you know you should at least listen you should definitely read it and, and take it to heart and think why did they say that does that mean but just because they say well i really didn't like that character or i don't think this you know that that dialogue scene in the drawing room was you know long and, and uninteresting if you mm-hmm. really liked it you don't have to start cutting away at it. You just, you can be like, okay, well, I like it. I'm happy for this reason. I'll leave it in. And I think too many people just go, oh, somebody said I have to get rid of it. So I'm going to get rid of it. And it makes them sad. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, you, you pick and choose your feedback. So you ask for it. Definitely. You want to see it. You need to know what it's all about. But then you can go, well, actually, you know, that scene, I still, as you just said yourself, I still like. It works mm. for me. That character I still like. If someone said that about calcium, I'd probably be devastated. But, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I would look at it and go, you know, that's good. But then there are other parts of feedback which I would never have spotted if someone hadn't told me. So, yeah, you yeah. should get feedback. But you should pick and choose. You can take from it. Um, and I think we can, and you, you've said it yourself, you can, get, you can get hung up on feedback. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally. Well, in the end, it's your story. And I joined a local writers group about five or six years ago and the host at the time he's not part of the group anymore but at the time our first meeting he said if you get like 30 percent of the feedback if 30 percent of the feedback is useful to you Mm -hmm. and this was a successful workshop he was like but don't expect you know the entire thing to be changed don't expect it to be totally polished this is all everybody's opinion and, you know, but in the end it's your decision and you need to do what's best for your book. Yeah. Story. Yeah. That's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, totally. Yeah. As I say, you can probably, you can probably get yourself a whole podcast on feedback because there are different ways of doing it and accepting it. I, I used to, in my deep and distant past, I used to be a trainer, um, train people and we used to do train sessions on feedback, giving and receiving. So there's, there's a, uh, huge amount you can do on that but um it is for, for from a writing point of view you take yeah. feedback you read it you accept it and you, you take what works for you yeah exactly we might be coming back to you going 
give us all your knowledge and feedback so we can write a podcast because we that we probably have one of those ready like we have a load of podcast ideas we have filled up for like a year but cool. yeah so knowing that that you've did training we may come and start picking your brain yeah or we may it's drag a- you back on here I, I, we'll put yeah. it in our back pocket <laughs> that's cool it was a very different environment it, it was uh I, I was trained in a bank believe it or not but um feedback was a was a thing you had to, to deal with so um, yeah yeah very big thing hmm. okay talking about that then do you give other writers advice do you throw out your own feedback this is interesting because i don't do it very often and a few reasons i suppose one is I still feel like I've not been writing that long. Um, and I feel there's loads of people out there that have been writing longer than me, have got more experience and know a lot more than me. So I tend not to throw out feedback just, you know, here and there. Um, if I get asked for some, I'll offer my thoughts. And again, with a caveat that they can accept it or not as, as they see fit. Um, one thing I have given is because I've self-published, I was on a creative writing course. And they asked me if I'd do a presentation on creative writing, uh, sorry, on um, self-publishing and how to do it. So I put together some slides, et cetera, et cetera, and went into like old work mode um, and did a presentation and they, they, they enjoyed it. I've invited back and I've, been, I've done it twice now. So that's been quite useful to go through how to, it, it was quite technical on the Amazon side of things, how to use Amazon, how to publish, et cetera. And one of the guys on the course um, went off and, and published his own um, self published his own book after hearing how to do it from me. So I was, I was quite pleased about that. Yeah. So, you know, um, so that, that's, I, I've done that and I've enjoyed doing that. And, and I've been asked, I might do one, another one again to another writing group at some point on how to do, to do Amazon. Although I, I have to try and probably cut it back because I, I was given 20 minutes and I took an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's, that's me for you sometimes. Once you, once you start me, you can't stop me. But um, in, in general, I don't, I don't give a lot of advice unless, unless I'm specifically asked. I don't just throw it out um, mm. because if people want to ask me for advice, I'll, I'll give what I can and help where I can. But otherwise, you know, I, I might be giving stuff that they don't want to hear. So it's, it's their choice, right? I guess, more than mine. Yeah. yeah I can understand that. Yeah. It doesn't mean I don't ask for advice. <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'll um I'll write articles with writing advice because it's something I'm passionate about and if it helps somebody else, great, but if not, well, hey, I had fun writing it anyway. And it it always pleases me when people comment on these articles and they're saying, "Oh, that w- that's such a good idea. I never thought of it that way. I'm going to give this a try." And I'm like, "Oh, look at me go. <laughs> like maybe I do know what I'm doing after all." <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's really great. I mean, I think really, I mean, maybe if I get a website ever set up and run, um, then I might start doing that because I think that, that then <laughs> makes sense. You've got a platform to do it from as well. So I think that makes sense. But that you advice should. I'm taking from you. Yeah, you should. <laughs> that's it. It's like um, when we started our websites, they're both like, they've got blogs on them. So it's got your website part where you've got all the yeah. blah, 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 blah about who we are and everything. But to make it an active site and so that Google likes it, you've got to keep things updated. <laughs> and blogs are the best thing. See, so just tying back to another podcast from earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blogs are really good for that. And it's like, you sit there going, well, what the hell am I going to blog about? And you can even talk about your writing journey. You can talk about, you know, about the book that you're writing. But depending on how the frequency you have to think of something and writing advice is always good. It doesn't have to be like, this is the best advice ever. Here is all of it. It can literally be, this is shit. I just learned today. This is how the, you know, I found out this that would really work for this and how to write the best descriptions. And, and that's what it can come from this, like from your own learning experiences without, you know, you having to have published a million books and be like a bestseller and, and that, and you will be, be surprised how many people will come and comment and be happy with the advice so yes you should start a website what is wrong yeah, website i think i think actually it links back to another piece of advice as we're talking advice um that i don't think i've mentioned surprisingly is write every day <laughs> and and <laughs> yeah you see that gets that reaction um it's 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 a it's in a fantasy terms it's a double-edged sword um do i write every day funny if i found that i do without realizing i don't consciously mm-hmm. write every day 
but I found out I write something. Now it could be, I don't know, it could be three lines, but I'm writing something. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you quantify write every day, how much. So that, again, as another piece of writing advice, some people do that initially go, um, other people think, oh yeah, that makes sense. But writing something, even if it's perhaps a book review or you've read or something like that, you're still writing something. So mm -hmm. it, it, I must admit, I found, because I've been doing this a while now, when I stop writing completely, I do tend to seize up a little bit and it takes me a couple of days to get back into it again. So it's not, it's not bad advice to write every day within reason. Yeah. I think what you said though is writing different things. It's, I think it's when the advice is write every day and that translates whether people mean to or not, where it's like, well, you need to be writing a thousand words a day or a yeah. 400 words a day. And it's like, as you said, if you're writing a blog post, if you're writing a, a review, if you're making notes about a novel, if you're writing your novel, then that's, that's still writing. It's still, yeah. you know, kind of, greasing the wheels if you will but i think people hear that and go oh my god i need to and then other people say oh well i've been writing like four thousand a day i get up at four in the morning and it's like ah oh, no thanks <laughs> some of us like sleeping <laughs> ari i feel called out <laughs> you should you weird coffee drinker who gets up too early to write every day i have to be honest i haven't written like a word in a couple of months <laughs> As of this recording, I like I was on a roll. I was doing really well, and then I just it it burns you out fast. If you write every single day and you work on like the same novel, you get so burnt out. And then for me, I don't know about anybody else, but I will take like a month or two months or even three months off. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It, and then and then you feel guilty afterwards for not getting any progress done. Mm. I, I, I suppose in, the, in this. This month, October, is a weird month because I'm taking a, a bit of a half break, if you like, because I've just put one out there. I'm, I'm not doing too much, but I'm picking at little short stories. So probably yeah. in a week, I've written about a thousand words in a week, which is fine. I've still done yeah, something. Yeah. Still so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, but then in November, I'm, I might start into something else. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Um, but I've got, I've got kind of two hot two novel first drafts already written that I've got read it at some point and I just haven't got into edit mode yet. That's another, mm. that's another story. So to speak. Sounds like you're making good progress. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah it's, it's surprising really. Yeah. 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 It, it feels like Sounds it's been a quite, it feels like it's been a quite year cause I haven't put much out, but I've, but I've got two first drafts written. So on the other side of that, there's two novels waiting. So probably next year be more active than this year. God, I think I hate you right now. <laughs> you, haven't seen, you haven't seen them yet <laughs> yeah I, i'm still you know trashing my, my novels and rewriting them i feel like i'm trapped in some sort of groundhog day and i need to stop oh maybe, maybe see take, you're inspiring us that's what you're doing <laughs> maybe take a sidestep and do a, a little short story to to break it up i do that yeah a lot. i i did that because i'm uh, I did a short, I, I wrote 7,000 words in two hours. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> because I had a deadline that I waited till the last minute because I am very good at that. Um, and that's going to start coming back to get edited and everything. And I, I, I think I burnt out in that, two, uh, that uh, you know, two hour window. I just, the idea I've got to edit it now is, oh, God. so even short stories, then, <laughs> they're just too much. I, I promise myself sometimes I'm going to sit here and write all day, all day long. And I do a morning, I get to lunch and I think, yeah, and that's it, it's done. That's <laughs> all. It's over. It's very tiring work. People don't it get is. it. It's so mentally tiring. It is. So. It is. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think we covered a lot this episode. We talked about the worst advice we've received. We've talked about the best advice we've received. But the bottom line is you have to take all writing advice with a grain of salt and you need to do what works best for you and what best what works best for your projects. So Ian, thank you so much for being here with us this week. Did you want to tell our listeners anything about yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. And, and thank you very much for inviting me on. Um, so as it's been said, I'm Ian Goff. Um, I'm a UK's based author. I've been writing for about oh, three or four years now and um, really enjoying it. I've put a couple of books out there and um, shameless plug. You can catch me on, on Amazon author page and, and Twitter. Um, and yeah, 
just really enjoying it, full of ideas and, and spilling more out as, as each day goes by. So um, thank you very much for inviting me on. Well, excellent. No, it's been our pleasure, really. Um, all of Ian's links and information will be in the description below. So please go check out his stuff and give him a follow. And we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Do let us know some of the best and worst writing advice you've received in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag The Merry Writer Podcast. If you want to get some extra content, you can head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash The Merry Writer Podcast. You can support our show for as little as $1 a month and get some extra bonus content, including mini episodes. And tune in next week for another episode of the Merry Writer Podcast, where we ask all the right questions. Thanks for listening. Bye. 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 This podcast is brought to you by Stuffed Bookshelves. Our TBR piles are huge. The music titled Inspired is by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.